Greetings and welcome. My name is Dante Volari, and this video is an narrated version of the presentation titled Spacecraft Orbit Attitude Coupled Dynamics in Close Proximity to Small Bodies, that is part of my doctoral preliminary examination. This presentation will consist of three parts. I'm going to start with an introduction covering the problem statement and contributions of this research. Then the second part have three subsections, each one corresponding to a part in the dissertation, as shown here on the right side of the slide being the first one about modeling orbit attitude couple dynamics, the second one about using the attitude as an actuator for changing the orbital trajectory of a spacecraft, and the third one it's about accurate propagation using geometric numerical integrators and model parameter estimation. I'm going to finish this presentation with some concluding remarks and future work. So in recent years there has been an increased interest in asteroid exploration missions, mainly due to scientific purposes, mining and fuel extraction, and planetary defense. There are several challenges presented in close proximity operations, mainly due to the highly irregular and weak gravitational field that these small bodies present, and also due to perturbing phenomena such as orbit attitude coupling and solar radiation pressure. So the main goal of this research is to develop high definition models and techniques that allow us to improve the analysis and control of spacecraft dynamics in close proximity to small bodies, including long-term behavior and model parameter determination. An accurate dynamics model of the spacecraft motion helps us to improve the efficiency in the spacecraft control system, therefore allowing to exploit the natural dynamics around the small body. This will consequently lead to a reduction of propellant consumption, extension of mission time, and an increase in the accuracy of the asteroid characterization. In this research, there are four main contributions being the first one, the introduction of a novel high-resolution gravitational field model for small bodies that capture the orbit attitude coupling effect. The second one is the analytical computation of the full set of allowed values for the second order coupling force term due to all possible orientations of the spacecraft, considering a point mass primary. Number third is the introduction of a translational rigid body geometric integrator of high order for propagation of coupled dynamics about asteroids including non-conservative forces. And the last one is the development of an estimation method for computing non-homogeneous mass distribution using a core and mantle model for the asteroid. With these comments, let's go now to the first topic of the research, modeling the orbit attitude coupling phenomena. First, a quick discussion on the background will take place. This format will be repeated for the two other parts. For close proximity operations, several models that represent the gravity field exist in the literature. Among these, the three most used are the ellipsoid, point masses from mass con, for mass concentrations, and polyhedron models. As we can see, the ellipsoid model doesn't accurately capture the shape of highly regular asteroids. The point masses model does capture the irregularities, however, it has a very low resolution near the surface due to the separation between point masses. The most accurate model in the literature is the polyhedron model, that is analytically exact for a given polyhedron shape, considering it to be constant density. These models consider the spacecraft to be a point mass. When the spacecraft gets close to the asteroid, its size can become comparable to that one of the small body and can no longer be considered a point mass. There is a coupling between translational motion and rotational motion of the spacecraft that can be measured by the coupling parameter epsilon. Models in the literature that capture this phenomena exist. The spherical harmonics model is the first one. However, it presents several convergence issues in close proximity to the asteroid surface. The next one is the point masses model expanded to capture the rigid body. However, as we saw before, it presents a low accuracy closer to the surface due to the separation between point masses. And the third one is a, an expansion of the polyhedron up to second order. However, this model is very slow and cannot be used for a, 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 an optimal way for control in real time applications. So for a computationally fast calculation of the gravity force, the Mascon model is the fastest one. For a single point mass, the gravitational force can be expanded to higher order terms, accounting for the shape of the rigid body spacecraft, as shown in equation number one. Here, the expansion of the second order uh, force is performed, and we can see the coupling with the attitude via the inertia terms identified here as J. Considering now a point mass spacecraft, the gravitational force due to n mass cons can be computed as shown in equation number two, being this the fastest method from a computational point of view. 
Now, for a rigid body space travel and for an asteroid filled with aim point masses, the gravitational force can be computed as the sum of two terms as shown here in equation 3, where the first term represents the contribution of the zero order term due to the mass cons, and the second term represents the higher order contributions. In order to increase the resolution of this model, we replace the first order term, the zero order term, for the polyhedron gravitational force model. This effectively captures the highly irregular shape of the asteroid with high definition and also keeps the coupling, the higher order coupling terms due to the mass cons inside the asteroid. For computing the equations of motion, a set of reference frames and a model for the asteroid and the spacecraft should be defined. This is done here on the figure on the left side of the slide, where we can see that we have three body fixed frames, one on the spacecraft, another one on the asteroid, another one centered on the sun and that each point mass has a reference frame that has one of its axes pointing towards the spacecraft. The spacecraft has a complementary point mass frame with one of its axes pointing towards the point mass. For uh, the, all the asteroids are considered to be constant density polyhedrons, and for their translational motion about the sun, they're considered to be a point mass. Also, they are considered to be rotating with constant angular velocity about their largest moment of inertia axis. With this consideration, we can now write the equations of motion for the rigid body spacecraft as shown here in equations 6 and 7. For the translational motion, the gravitational effects of the Sun are considered. Coupling terms up to the fourth order are retained for certain cases as shown in equation number 6. And the rotational dynamics follow the classical form of Euler's equation as shown in equation number 7. With the equations of motion, a comparison between the proposed model and two models found in the literature is performed for validation. For this, trajectory and attitude are propagated using the proposed model, and the results are compared against an exact model. Another accurate model is included for comparison in red. The error in trajectory is very low when compared to a more accurate model, however, this is not the case for the attitude error. Nevertheless, this doesn't have a large impact since in real applications the spacecraft is oriented specifically in a direction and the gravity gradient torque is treated as a perturbance that is compensated. Having developed a model that captures the orbit attitude coupling, let's see now how the coupling effects can be used for control. As previously mentioned, the magnitude of the orbit attitude coupling can be measured by the parameter epsilon. The effects of the orbit on the attitude are well known and have been captured by the gravity gradient torque approach. However, the effects of the attitude on the orbit are not that well studied, and if properly quantified, those can be used as an actuator or a supplementary control force. So, due to the coupling effect, pointing the spacecraft in a specific direction can have beneficial or detrimental effects. So, how can we exploit the beneficial effects? Several numerical methods in the literature used to estimate the attitude for the desired coupled force orientation exist. Uh, these methods are numerical in nature and are not very efficient since they need to be computed at each time step. Then, the need for an analytical uh, quantification of the coupling effects is needed. So, for the analytic for the analysis that follows, only the second order force terms are considered and to make the problem mathematically tractable. We also consider a single point mass to be centered at the center of mass of the asteroid and then we can generalize the results for multiple point masses. In order to analytically quantify the effects of the attitude on the translational force, first we resolve this force in the FP frame that has its x-axis pointing toward the spacecraft as shown before in slide number 7. This returns the form of the second order coupled force shown in equation 10. The goal then is to find the boundaries of the region where this force term evolves for all attitudes. For this, a single point mass is placed at the center of the asteroid. The results obtained show that the boundaries are three ellipsoids of revolution, two laying inside the larger one, and here the center semi-major axis and semi-minor axis for the first one are shown, and the other two can be found in a similar way with similar uh, characteristics. Considering a triaxial spacecraft, there are three solutions along the XP axis, corresponding to each axis of the spacecraft body fixed frame pointing towards the point mass, as shown in the following video. Here it can be seen that the orientation that maximizes the force in the XP axis, or radial direction, is the one that has the spacecraft pointing its Z axis towards the point mass, while the minimizing one is the one with the Y axis pointing towards the mass cone. These results indicate that the possibility of using the attitude as an actuator exists. By changing the magnitude and orientation of the second order coupled force, 
by orienting the spacecraft in a specific direction. Next, based on these results, the coupling effects on equilibrium points near asteroids will be studied. Considering our rotating frame of reference, that is in fact the asteroid body fixed frame, we can define a generalized effective potential that includes both the gravitational potential and the effects of the centrifugal force. In equation 11, the coupling effects are introduced on the term u, and by computing the gradient of this generalized potential term and making it zero, the position of the equilibrium points can be obtained as shown here in equation 12, where the attitude dependent force has been made explicit. Considering now a large spacecraft about asteroid Bennu, the equilibrium point's positions are affected by how the spacecraft is oriented. This is clear by looking at the position of points E3 and E4, and also the positions of E7 and E8 that change depending on the attitude of the spacecraft. This change in location indicates the possibility of controlling the spacecraft using attitude actuation. Then if the system using attitude actuation is controllable, certain configurations can be more controllable than others. Let's see how can this be measured. In order to compare the controllability of different system configurations using attitude actuation, first the system needs to be linearized about equilibrium. We do this by performing a state space realization of the system, as shown here on equation 13. Then, for a stable A matrix, we can compute the controllability gramian by solving the Lyapunov equation denoted in equation 14. We can then perform an eigenvalue decomposition of this gramian and the eigenvector corresponding to the largest eigenvalue indicates the most controllable direction in state space. Therefore, the controllability gramian provides the degree of controllability of the system. The way we can compare how much more controllable the system configuration is with respect to another one is to measure the degree of controllability. For this, a cost function is defined as shown in equation 16. This function represents the minimum energy required to transfer the system from the initial state to the final state. In this case, the controllability gramian is formed by an stable and unstable parts, and a transformation of the state variables is performed in order to arrange the A matrix in a special form. Using this cost, it was found for asteroid Bennu that the most controllable system configuration is the one where the spacecraft is located at the equilibrium point E4, with an orientation that maximizes the in-plane coupled force. Due to the low magnitude of the coupled force, its effect is more visible by looking at the long-term evolution of the system. This takes us to the last part of this research, where a fast numerical propagation method will be developed to this end. Traditional numerical propagators in the literature directly integrate the equations of motion, and they do not maintain conserved quantities. This means that any error on the attitude gets translated to the orbital um, dynamics and vice versa. Additionally, they require several computations of the gradient of the gravitational potential at each integration step, making the, this method very slow, uh, in particular for high-definition gravitational field models. So in recent years, there has been an increased interest in geometric numerical integration methods, of which the Galerki variational integrators are the most promising. They are geometric in nature, so they preserve the structure of the system. They are also very fast and allow us to construct higher order methods that are very stable and accurate for long-term periods. The geometric methods developed here allow us to properly translational dynamics for a long time period, thus allowing to better analyze the effects of the non-homogeneous mass distribution. For this, first the model of the non-homogeneous density should be implemented. Here, the column mantle model is considered. If we can estimate the mass density distribution in the asteroid, the model is fully characterized. For this, several methods exist. In the literature, the classic estimation is done via the spherical harmonics model, but as we saw, there are several convergence issues near the asteroid surface, and also there is a loss of resolution for highly irregular asteroids. So given the coupled model, if the coupled force can be measured, can this provide more information to make the estimation process more accurate? In the next few slides, we are going to examine this question, but first, the Galerki numerical methods will be developed. The Galerki variational integrators can be constructed by approximating the discrete Lagrangian using high-resolution methods. The better we can approximate this Lagrangian, the more accurate the integration method becomes. For higher accuracy, the Galerki methods use polynomials for approximating the trajectories, and a quadrature rule for computing the action integral, as shown here by the white curve on the figure that approximates the green trajectory. The white curve is known as the Galerkin curve, and it's denoted on equation 18. We can then form the general Galerkin variational methods, 
as shown here on equation 17, where we see that this is an implicit method and the first three equations need to be solved in order to propagate position and then the last equation can be used for propagating momentum. Non-conservative forces can be included in the Galerki methods by discretizing them as potentials and incorporating them in equation 17. To see how these methods behave, in the next slide a comparison will be performed against classic methods found in the literature. The position and normalized energy errors are shown in the left side of the screen for a propagation performed about Cleopatra for 150 days using a large time step. It can be seen that the position error for the three Galerki methods is very low when compared to the traditional methods in the literature. The energy error shows that the non-geometric methods artificially generate or dissipate energy. However, energy conservation is not an indication of the accuracy of the method, as can be seen here for the second order variational integral method in orange. This method conserves energy throughout the simulation, however, it is very inaccurate for propagations. We can also see that the discretization of the non-conservative forces is very good for small magnitudes of these forces when compared to the main force. The accuracy of all trigalerkin methods developed is excellent when compared to other methods, especially for long time steps. Now, being able to perform accurate long-term propagations, let's see how the non-homogeneous mass distribution can be estimated using the coupled dynamics. First, an accurate model of the non-homogeneous density inside an asteroid is defined using a core and mantle approach, with mass cons to account for the coupling. The asteroid mass can then be computed as the sum of a term for the core and a term for the mantle, and the same applies to the propagation force model. This model is used to generate the measurements, simulating a real mission scenario. For estimating the model parameters, there are three unknowns that require estimation, the core ratio and the mass con masses. The mass con masses for the core and mantle can be estimated by solving a non-negative linearly squared problem, as shown in equation 21. For the core ratio estimation, an optimization problem is solved by looking at the residuals after the filling is performed via equation 21. Also during this process, the measurement model is different from the propagation model, so it is computationally faster during the optimization problem. Finally, we see that the measurement matrix is dependent on the attitude and position, so this information should be available as well. Results for the estimation problem show that incorporating the couple of terms increase the accuracy of the estimation. This is clear by looking at the core and mass estimation plots in the left side, where using the full model with coupling produces more accurate results than using the model without coupling. The estimation process presents large errors independently of which model is used. This is due to the ill-conditioned nature of the Mascon estimation problem. Finally, propagations performed with the parameters estimated using both coupled and uncoupled model are shown on the right side of the slide, where we see that the propagations performed with the parameters estimated using the full model are, uh, have more accuracy than the ones uh, generated by using the main term or uncoupled model only. This analysis allows to obtain the model parameters and thus concludes the main body of research. Next, we'll cover the conclusions and future work. During the development of this research, a novel gravitational field model was proposed that is accurate, that can be tuned, and that captures the orbit attitude coupling effects. Next, we saw the analytical quantification of the coupled force for a single point mass. We saw that we can control this coupled force via the attitude. Following this, geometric and numerical propagation methods were presented based on the Galerkin approach that are accurate and very fast and allow to include the non-conservative forces. And finally, we saw the non-homogeneous mass estimation problem where the asteroid is represented by a core and mantle model and we noticed that in, uh, incorporating the coupled force terms improves the accuracy of the estimation problem. Several items uh, are left for future work. Among these, uh, number one, to improve the mass con distribution inside the asteroid. Number two, to perform orbital control via attitude actuation. Number three will be the combination of the solar radiation pressure and gravity coupling effects to perform control. Number four, would be to add the rotational dynamics to the Galerkin variational integrators. And number five would be the extension of the analysis to binary systems, where now the secondary asteroid is smaller in size and more comparable to the spacecraft size. This concludes the presentation, and for more information, please feel free to contact me via the email address shown on the screen. Thank you very much for watching this narrated version of the presentation.